as we move through this a period of significant change, uh, the question that often comes through in terms of emerging market contexts like us is to be able to uh, really go out and, and leave uh, some of the echo chambers that I argue we often have um, and really go and understand the, the fabric, the DNA, the makeup of w what South Africa really sits in, and what it presents in terms of uh, the canvas that we're painting on. And so let's use the example of uh, a, a bank like Capitec, right? So Capitec Bank started in 2004. Um, and today is, by market cap, the fourth largest bank in the world. So we right. always talk about the big four. We now talk about the big five. Um, Capitec has got the second most amount of bank account holders with 9.3 million bank account holders. And many people often ask the question, well, were those all churned from the other big four banks? And I argue no. In the research, the majority of those bank account holders came from individuals who were unbanked. Uh, it created financial inclusion because they were able to understand what the needs, the desires, the aspirations of people were who had desires to be part of a financially inclusive banking system and they were able to provide products and services that spoke to them. And we now see uh, what that has meant in terms of uh, their strategy, what, is it meant, uh, what it has meant in terms of changing the face of financial services. I'll never forget in 2004, sitting at I think a WEF session with Michil LaRue, who was one of the founders of Capitec, uh, and he looked at me and he said, Abdullah, you must buy some Capitec shares. Uh, and they were relatively small and insignificant <laughs> at the time. And I laughed and I said, no, I'm not interested. You're still small. You're playing with the big four. Uh, and uh, they were, I think, 1 rand 40 something at the time. And we know they're now 860 rand. Uh, don't take investment uh, decisions <laughs> from me. Uh, <laughs> but I think it really speaks to this issue of, of financial inclusion. Um, and that's a good case in terms of saying, how do we actually understand the multiple users how do we understand what opportunities present themselves from a South Africa perspective? And how do we create more collaborative partnerships where we're able to get much closer coordination between government, business, academia, civil society to come together and say, what are some of the, the pressing issues we have? And given that we're living through this period of digital transformation, how do we use some of that to be able to make it more relevant uh, and to have deep impact in some of the sectors that we find? So that's what, that's what excites me, uh, Jeff. It, it, I think we're in a period of phenomenal change, but it has to move beyond the B2C space. It has to move into the B2B space, into the industrial internet of things that the white paper speaks about, uh, into country contexts, into changing uh, the lives of people. That's when it becomes really relevant in, in our context. <laughs>